unpopular opinion, but I literally think that women should be paid to exist. I know y'all are probably going to be like, what? But no, follow me on this. Follow me on this. So one, like, our bodies literally create life, y'all. Like, that within itself, like, it beats any freaking invention that a man can come up with. Like, any tech company. Like, no. No tech. All right, hold on. Be before she go any further, watching your lady give birth to your future self, like if your offspring, your seed, is a beautiful thing. The level of respect I gained after seeing my son being born is crazy. Because I didn't know the Pum Pum could do that. Alright? I didn't know it can do that. Now, I ain't gonna go into details, but... It was a beautiful thing. That company can come up with a baby in my belly. So one, that's why we should get paid. Um, and then even women who, like, are, have already had children, they should still get paid because guess what? Like, the life of a mother, like, that's a whole job within itself. I literally think that we should receive monthly incomes for being women. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I'm being so serious. She had me with the given birth part. Because giving birth is crazy. But, a huge but. Being a man is no walk in the park, neither, sis. The level of expectation that you have to live up to as a man. And in the internet generation, it has become worse. The airport, and we both happened to be on the same flight to New York City. So I asked her to hang out. I have no idea why I decided to dress up like a freaking rice farmer. We got along at dinner, so I invited her onto a rooftop in New York City, which ended up leading into one of the most awkward moments of my life. Why did you decide to go on this date? A date? Is it a date? Nah. I illustrate how much I wanted to eat myself off. Nah. I, didn't. I mean, hang out. <laughs> nah. Hey, bro. Ha! Hey, the party done. The party done, done, done. I spent money on you, and you're not gonna call out little rendezvous a date? Let's break this down. He just put himself in the friend zone. He is friend zoned for life. That's one. Two. If I go on vacation, I'm not wasting my time on you. I'm trying to spank cheeks. I waste money. I take you out on a date. I ask you why you decided to come on this date. You gonna say a date? That bitch had the soldier. You know when when Soldier Boys on um on Breakfast Club Drake. That bitch said a date. I'd have got up and left. She'd have had to Uber herself home. Who the hell going on? Who goes on vacation to get friend zoned? Is, she... is that flies on the pom pom? I knew it was too good to be true. I knew at some point some bullshit was pop up on my damn feed. Yo, do you know how crazy, do you know how crazy that joint have to smell for the flies only 
to be bordering around that area. Hey, yeah, no comment. I'm a, I'm a delete. I'm a delete everything I said before I say this right here. No comment, bro. Just, just you know. I want you guys to understand that there are people in this world who aren't as fortunate as you to take a shower. Let's see if I still got it. Let's see why I run. Y'all gonna run around and see why I carry a knife in there. Yeah, my boy got the raisin in his mouth. Right. Now that's proper etiquette. That's that's prison shit. But also, I know sometimes y'all be saying, oh boy, you you always talking about yourself. I don't know how to do that, but this bring back memory. Um, it was a particular time when in Brooklyn, I don't want to say the whole of New York, but in Brooklyn, people used to get slashed on their face. You would be at the bus stop waiting for the bus. You, it don't matter if you was 40, 50, a teenager. It don't, it don't matter, right? You would just be minding your business waiting at the bus stop and somebody who would be taking part in the gang initiation their initiation was to random to come up to you randomly and give you a buck fifty. That's that's what that bring back memory of. I don't know how many of y'all remember them days. I the people from the people around my age who grew up in New York, who grew up in Brooklyn, y'all remember this. This was like late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, you, you could get slashed in your face for no reason. <laughs> She really tried to make him feel bad for her cheating, bro. That's crazy. She said it only happened one time and we used protection. Baby. Baby girl. I don't want to... Certain things... I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Ladies and fellas, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong in the comment section. But ladies, I want you to understand something, okay? Once you're my woman, I ain't going to say you my everything, but once you're my woman, right? I, I, think about it as a house, as a home, okay? Once you're my woman, I have officially rented a new apartment. Officially. And now that apartment has become my home. Once you allow somebody to break into my apartment, meaning that your security system is weak, I no longer feel safe in that home. You, you get where I'm going with this? Once you allow somebody to bypass your security system, the security system of my home, Who's to say somebody else can't break into that security system? I'm never going to be able to forget it. And you got to think about think about it this way, right? When somebody break into your house, they break into your house to steal. All right? Now, emotionally, once you allow somebody to bypass that and they get into the house, you, per se, 
They have emotionally stole something. Unless you have had something stolen from you before, you may not understand where I'm going with this. But I've had people break into my house and steal shit. You feel violated. You know, like, we are very imaginative as men. So now, I'm never going to stop thinking about how this man was probably busting your cheeks wide open. The little vulnerable things and faces that you made for me, I'm not going to be able to not think about how you was doing that for him. And instead of that being a turn on for me, it's going to actually turn into a bad dream for me. So I'm never going to be able to look at you the same when we do the nasty. I ain't gonna lie, bro. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. That 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 shit kind of sexy. It's probably because she looked good too, but that that's that's kind of sexy. It's a lot. Of, a lot of them Instagram models would have probably cut their damn fingers off by now. She doing yo. She doing the no look. Oh, now she looking. She did the first one. She wasn't even looking. So I go, you want water? That's Spanish? Is that Spanish? It's Spanish, right? sleep don't sleep you can go out there and find you a, a nice little joint that could cook you some fried fish you go to work and come back home you never starve never starve in case some of you ladies don't know the way to a man's heart is through his stomach we are men are so freaking simple it's not that hard to make a man happy Ladies, it is not that hard to make your man happy. We are simple creatures. Feed me. me. Don't annoy me. I've noticed, and I'm speaking as a married man, that trying to make your woman happy sometimes is like trying to solve a puzzle with 20,000 pieces. I might be saying too much. I might be saying too much, fellas. <clears throat> it, it, it's statistically a fact. Single mothers reproduce the worst product, right? Part of that, when we talk about males, especially black males, we don't realize that we're programmed, because you don't, if you don't understand history, you won't realize that, like, it starts with the, the female. Even when we were slaves, the idea is if you program the mind of the female slave, she will raise the offspring to continue your agenda without you having to be physically involved. She will teach her children to abide because we're the first givers of life and care when kids are small. So we train them up to be good slaves, follow these particular rules. We indoctrinate and, you know, create certain philosophies in their mind. So by the time they're big and strong, they still follow them behind the same agenda that was placed into us. So when you look at males that come from single mother-headed households, if you don't get around positive male role models, you have the emotional management skills of a woman. Break it's just a, you, Break so she so it it's all she of your upbringing, shit. 17, 18 years, you've only seen a woman head the household. You've only seen how a woman problem solves. you only seen how a female, i.e. your mother, handles things. You've only seen how she deals with anger, guilt, you know, shame, different feelings. You're only watching it from her. Now, she ain't telling you, act like me. But she's telling you, act like me, because this is programming. This is psychotic. How y'all feel about that? 
I was not expecting that. How do y'all feel about that? Listen, ladies, you need a positive male role model for your sons. You need a, a male role model, not a male friend. You need a father figure for your sons. I can honestly say that because I have a son and... I see how sometimes my son try to walk over my wife. Now, I hope she don't take this as disrespect, but I personally feel as though if I wasn't here, my son would be getting away with murder. I'm not going to put all the blame on my wife, bro. I can't do that because a lot of the blame comes on me also because... I've noticed that I was trying to be my son's friend instead of being his parent. And that comes down to how I was raised. I was raised, my father was really strict. You know, my father had this saying, I'm going to give you what you need, not what you want. And he, he firmly believes that the parent is always right. And that's not the case. The parent is not always right. And even now that I'm a 30-something-year-old man and my father's in his 60s and I try to, like, talk to him about things that happened when I was younger and how he could have did it differently, he do not want to hear that shit, bro. He do not want to hear that, you know. I'm not going to say I was the best kid, bro, but a lot of the trouble that I got into in school was literally me being defensive, and those are things I could have, that, that could have been avoided. Those are things that could have been avoided, and my pops don't be trying to hear that. So, with my son... I didn't want to raise my son the way I felt as though my pops raised me. So I was being real laps. And on top of that, my wife was being laps as well. And here we are now. Okay, my son has a lot of things that I didn't have growing up. Like yesterday, I had to get in his ass because on a school night, he's upset that I took his iPad away from him. Now, mind you, that's a he's a five-year-old. He's a five-year-old that has... Three iPads, bro. My father gave him an iPad, which is crazy. But my father gave him an, gave him an iPad. His grandfather, his his other grandfather, my wife's father, gave him an iPad, which he broke. And originally, he had my wife's old iPad. So right now, he has a brand new iPad. And... He gets to play games and do all this extra shit. But on a school night, I take it away. He's upset. And he crying and he's doing all this extra shit. And I'm like, bro, do you understand how I grew up? Like, what are you crying for? Tell me what you crying for. He, cause, cause, cause you, you took my iPad. I'm like, bro. All you have to do is go to school. When I was younger, I had to go to school, come home, take care of a goat. Well, take care of a sheep. I had a sheep. When I was five years old, I had a sheep. I had to go to school, come home, take the sheep out, make sure the sheep ate. Right? We didn't have hot water. I used to take showers in cold water. Sometimes I would have special treatment and we had a big, we had a, a pail, big pail outside in, in the um the yard. My grandma would fill that with water and the sun would hit that joint and it will warm up. 
And by the time I come from school, I'll be able to take me a nice little bath. A little nice warm bath. But those special occasions, bro. For a long point in for a long period in time, we didn't have no bathroom inside the house. We had an outhouse. Now I'm I'm saying all this. This was before I moved I came to America. Okay, this was before I came to America. We had an outhouse. So I'm looking at my son now. My son has a cell phone. He has an iPad. We have three cars. He has never taken public transportation. Never. I used to have to walk to school bare feet. Or I used to have them thong slippers. When my thong slippers broke, I used to have to fix it with a nail. I know I'm, I'm like varying off topic, but I say all that to say, bro. Parenting is very important. So, ladies, you can't be mommy and daddy. It doesn't work like that. You cannot be mommy and daddy. 